Perhaps you recall that a recall in Colorado is easy to get rolling, just gather enough signatures. It's hard to complete, though, getting the votes to actually remove someone from office. In recent years, failed recalls run by conservatives against Democratic Governor Jared Polis have been good at one thing, collecting the names and addresses of Coloradans. Our Marshal Zellinger looks at a plan to make recalls harder to pull off. Collecting signatures to try to recall a politician has been used to try to undo elections in Colorado. Don't like someone's politics? Let's recall them. Democratic Governor Jared Polis faced two recall efforts, kind of. The people collecting the signatures to get a new election never turned in the signatures. The way it is now, it, it incentivizes recalls when there shouldn't be recalls. Democratic State Representative Lindsey Doherty presented a bill today that, in part, would limit how recall elections work. Under the legislation, if an elected leader were successfully recalled, they could only be replaced with someone of the same political party. She's not even sure it's constitutional yet. If someone does something so unethical or heinous that they shouldn't be able to do this job, then let's recall them. But the, the point shouldn't be, let's recall a person to change the political party. You know, I think they're one step away from just saying we're going to ban Republicans from going for, you know, going for any election. Michael Fields is a conservative who is well versed in recall efforts. He briefly led an effort to recall State Senator Kevin Priola last year after Priola changed his political affiliation from Republican to Democrat. Get this, though. Under this bill, because Priola was a Republican when he was elected, he could only be replaced by a Republican if he were recalled, even though he's now a Democrat. And I think it should be up to the people to decide who they want to get rid of, one, and who they want to replace them with, two. And just limiting, you know, the political party, uh, that doesn't stop politics from entering it. This is a political bill. So I think if we're recalling someone, it should be for the right reasons, and I think this essentially takes the politics out of recalls. Well, I reached out to the Attorney General's office, which reviews legislation like this for constitutionality. It's still reviewing it. I asked Fields, if this were to pass, would you bring back your recall effort against Priola, knowing that if you were to win that, he would have to be replaced by a Republican? The short answer is no, because Priola's seat is up again after next year's election, yeah. so the timing's not there, and the cost of collecting signatures, the cost, benefit, time, effort, versus what are you really getting out of the end? It's, it's a non-issue for Priola. And, and this, if I'm not mistaken, would not apply to nonpartisan municipal elections, so like mayor of Denver, city council of Aurora, that kind of School thing. board races where you don't have a D or an R, it would not impact those races. And those are the races that a lot of Republicans are very intently focused on in the next couple of years after having not been able to win anything lately. Right, and so one strategy, if they could get it past voters, perhaps to change the Constitution, I think it'd be in the Constitution, to get rid of party affiliation in other races. If it works for school board, if it works for city council for mayors where you don't know the D or the R. Maybe it would work for sheriffs. Maybe it would work for county clerks. Maybe it would work for secretary of state or other races that, that Republicans are having a tougher time winning right now because of the R next to the name. That That's genius. If you can't elect Republicans, then hide who's a Republican. I, good thinking. Marshall, thank you.